I had an idea about something that I can do that sounds like it might not be a stupid thing. And that is, uh, I really can avoid spending my food stamps this month. I looked out and did outside in the tent where I store stuff kind of like a pantry. I went through my canned goods and dry goods and stuff. And I really think that if I'm very careful, if I'm very careful, I can make it through the month this month without <coughs> buying any groceries except perhaps a little bit of fresh milk and things like that. But mostly I can survive on canned and frozen um, vegetables and fruits and of course we've got the canned meat and whatnot so it looks to me like I can get away with not spending any money at all on food if I'm very careful not that that would be that much fun but I could do it in fact if I'm really really careful I can probably do that for the next couple of months but I should be able to make a trip into Albuquerque probably around March to buy cases of preserved foods because by March and April people will be going back to the flea market again which is only two blocks from me if I'm really judicious about what I buy I can probably purchase things that I can turn around and sell for only a dollar per item which would be a lot cheaper than things are normally oh, than, than things normally cost here in town a lot of people can't afford to drive back and forth to Albuquerque I can't I haven't been since gee whiz I guess it's been about a year it's just not worth wasting the gas and it's not worth risking any kind of mechanical issues with the truck so I'm thinking of hoarding not only my food stamps but also um, as much cash as I can. I got in Christmas presents from people. And I haven't spent... Oh, well, I've just bought the regular stuff that I usually buy. Except for I had a couple of very inexpensive under $10 each restaurant meals. I really didn't... I didn't go to the after Christmas sales. I haven't been to the grocery store in the next town. I really haven't spent hardly any money at all. Uh, so I have most of that. Today I almost spent extra on my credit card payments, thinking, well, that would help get the interest down. But then I thought, you know, I better just make my regular payment, which is always more than the minimum, um, to try to help keep the interest down. But I thought, maybe I better not double the payments this month because of my little evil plan to try to stockpile stuff to be able to sell at the flea. I think that really is my best option. The other thing is that in Albuquerque there's a uh, Goodwill Clearance Center. Goodwill is a thrift store, secondhand store. It's a fundraiser for people with disability. They have a warehouse where, hello sheep, everything that they weren't able to sell in their stores is dumped off by the truckloads at this warehouse. Basically they sell it by the pound. And this is a good time of year to go because people are emptying out closets and stuff because Christmas is over and people got gifts and they're donating stuff. is emptying out its old shelves and clearing out their old inventory to make room for all the new stuff that's coming in after Christmas. So I could go to the Goodwill Clearance Center and basically I could probably fill the back of my pickup truck for about $100 with goods that people can't really get here. Well, last month, without the gifts that I got for Christmas, I managed to save about $40 from my monthly income because I just didn't spend anything on anything. I haven't even been grocery shopping since before Thanksgiving because I was looking for cheap turkeys and turkeys aren't cheap this year. That's usually my cheap protein for about three months is I'll buy a couple of big giant turkeys at 30 40 cents a pound and I bring them home and freeze them and well cook them and bag them up and freeze them and that's a cheap source of really good lean protein for several months 
I'm really disappointed I didn't get to do that this year. I picked up a few things here and there at the local dollar stores. I'm eating up everything in the house. For one thing, I'm hoping to be able to save up money to move. And I want all the canned goods and dry goods and sacks of beans and rice and stuff out of this trailer before it has to move. Because it's not... It's very heavy anyway. I'm even going to be taking doors off of cabinets and stuff to reduce the weight. It's not fair to somebody to have to pull all this stuff and risk dropping their transmission or something. Using up whatever we can in the trailer and lightening the load. And in addition, you guys are going to have to be patient with me, but there will be some videos about Minecraft. There's a man who has become very popular with his Minecraft videos. His name is Paul Soros Jr. I've discovered his video series and I've been watching them. And I am determined to find a way that people with disabilities can play Minecraft. I'm not sure how it's going to happen. So I'm on his website and I'm asking if people are interested in um, kind of like a little support each other sort of group for people with disabilities who want to play Minecraft. Because you know how cruel the gaming community can be. Well, there, it's really intimidating when you have disabilities. There's a lot of things that are hard about Minecraft. If you have disabilities, like the fact that I'm vision impaired makes it hard to, makes some of the stuff hard to see. I'm playing on full screen right now. I don't usually do that. I'm just doing that because I'm videotaping. But I don't normally play on, on full screen, for instance, because there's something about the field of vision, the, um, the, the point of view that makes me really dizzy and nauseous if I do it for any length of time. So, um, and there's other stuff like that. And I just would like to uh, form a supportive community for people with disabilities who would like to play games but feel intimidated by, you know, the name calling and blah, blah, blah. Because it's not fair. And maybe we can find a way to adapt Minecraft so that we can play it. And also, maybe we can bring it to the developer's attention that there are some things about Minecraft that make it impossible for some people who would really like to play it. And since Minecraft is, let's face it, about um, making money for selling the game, maybe they would be interested in knowing how they could sell more of the game by making it more adaptable. And you will be seeing a few Minecraft videos occasionally, but not really because I have a lot of, you know, the things that I'm interested in, and it's not primarily gaming. However, when it comes to people with disabilities being able to play games, I have a lot of um, that. So I'm on Paul Soar's forums and website now and beginning to start a discussion about people with disabilities because I don't think anybody's ever even really considered it. So those are the things I'm up to. Let me know what you think. I think it's a good idea. Oh, I do want to tell you one other thing. I was very, very sad and depressed because I was afraid I was losing my truck. It always has stalled oh, frequently. Um, not to the point where it's like lethally dangerous, but it's been getting worse. And it also, it's hard to get it to turn over. I mean, it fires up just fine, but it takes a long time for it to finally, like, start, start, you know? Um, and then the worst thing is, I just got a new battery about a month ago, and I keep getting up in the morning. Now, it's been really cold here, and you know batteries can freeze, but a brand new battery freezing, it didn't make sense. And I couldn't figure it out. Well, you know what it was? The glove box had opened itself up. And I've never seen the light on in the glove compartment. But apparently there is one. And it was draining the battery overnight. When I finally figured out the glove box was open and got it closed, the battery stopped. Well, the stalling thing has to do with the fact that there's a local mechanic here. Um, I just asked to borrow a half inch wrench so I could loosen up the nuts and bolts on my battery posts so when I got home at night I'd be able to take the um, leads off the battery so it would drain overnight until I could figure out what was draining it well um, the guy I, I just under my breath said I'm so scared 
I didn't mean for him to hear it. So the guy looked at, ended up looking at my truck, and the problem is my vacuum hoses. My vacuum hoses are extremely old. It's not operating the truck properly anymore, and I, that's it's just messing with the performance. So for probably about ten dollars, or maybe twenty, I can go to AutoZone in the next town, buy a bunch of vacuum hoses and replace them myself. It's not even hard to do. So I'm okay with my truck. I figured out what was wrong with the battery and I figured out why I've got this um, intermittent stalling problem. So I should be good to go. What happened to those other mushrooms? Mushrooms, mushrooms. There they are. They just, I can't see them. That's what's going on and that's my evil plan so far. And hopefully uh, I could start earning some money selling some stuff at the flea market. I have a chicken and a pig and way up there is a cow. Bye!